Let's go. And we will sing. Oh. December 2021. For your life, boy, we're talking about gratitude. Gratitude to God, gratitude to people around you, gratitude for anything that has been positive as an impact in your life. We're taking our reading still in the book of Prophet Micah. Now we're in chapter 6 and we'll be reading from the first verse. Let's go quickly. Hear ye now what the Lord saith. Arise, contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth. For the Lord hath controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel, O my people, what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. For I have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed thee out of the house of servants, and I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O my people, remember now what Balak king of Moab consulted, and what Balaam the son of Beor answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gratitude simply means a heart of thanksgiving, an expression of appreciation for something well done that you think has had a positive impact in your life and perhaps a readiness to also be able to reciprocate and do something positive back to anybody who has done something good for you. It is therefore good to always show gratitude because we know that God is a faithful God, is ever doing good to us. It is good to show gratitude even unto fellow men who have done one thing or the other that is a positive impact to our lives. And that is why in this portion of the scriptures that we just read, God himself, in spite of the fact that he was pleading with the children of Israel, I mean, what a gracious God that would be. I mean, because he could take decisions, he could uh, do anything with anybody that annoyed him or wasn't in his will at a particular point in time. But God would always choose to reason with men, especially his own people, those that are called by his name. And so God chose to reason with Israel and to remind them what great things he had done for them in times past, taking them out of the land of Egypt, taking them to cross the Red Sea and beyond the Red Sea, still being with them to the extent that at a point in time when the king of the Moabites called Balak wanted to attack them and actually recognized that a great and mighty people had gotten out of Egypt and that he needed the blessing of the prophet Balaam, the man of God, to be able to curse the children of Israel so that Balak would be able to go against them and would be able to overrun them. Yet, God would not allow Balaam to go ordinarily with them. In spite of 
so to say, the stubbornness, the unnecessary determination of Balaam the prophet to go along with Balak at a point in time, even after mounting his ass, God sent his angels to dissuade Balaam from going with Balak. And the ass that Balaam the prophet was riding was able to see the prophet. I mean, was able to see the angel with a drawn sword and was able to recognize that this is not what the Lord wants us to do at this point in time. And Balaam had to strike the ass three times. And then the ass had to open its mouth and talk like a human being. Have I not been with you all along? And you also that have been serving all along, perhaps I should also bring that in that at that point in time, Balaam also ought to have shown some gratitude to his ass. But the real story is about that the children of Israel ought to have shown gratitude to God for being with them all along and making sure that people like Balak, the king of the Moabites, was not able to overrun them. All of these stories that I've told you, you'll find in the book of Numbers. If you read the entirety of chapter 22, you see it there. And then read a little further into chapter 23. You will understand how God was with the children of Israel and the reference to which he is making here in the book of Micah so that the children of Israel will be able to think and recognize that they ought to thank the Lord. They ought to show gratitude to the Lord for his faithfulness, for his mighty deeds that he had done in times past in their lives and that he yet was doing even at that point in time that prophet Micah was writing this. About the time that prophet Micah was writing this, unfortunately, because of their evil doings, the children of Israel got themselves to a point that they had two separate kings. There was a king in Judah, and the one reigned from Jerusalem, and there was another king in the northern region, and, you know, they called the northern region Samaria at that point in time. And so there were two kings in Israel, and they would not even appreciate the Lord that he had not allowed them to be completely consumed. They were only divided for a little while. And from the same mouth of this prophet Micah, and in his generation, not only himself, himself, prophet Amos, prophet Hosea, and prophet Isaiah, already assured them of the coming of the Lord, of the coming of the King of Kings, of the coming of one that will redeem the entirety of the world, starting from Israel, and that he will come from the stem of Jesse, that he will come from Judah, that the scepter will not move from Judah and that God would raise, and that's Jesus Christ that we're all waiting for, I mean, that came to the world and ruled the world and the second coming of whom we are expecting and came from their kindred and they ought to have shown gratitude. What is it that God is doing in your life that you don't seem to appreciate? That you are alive at all. You need to appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That you are situated Wherever you are in the world, God must have made provisions for you. Don't look at all those negative things that you may be able to easily see around you and therefore switch off the mode of gratitude that you should show. Don't let bad governance make you forget that you have to show gratitude to God. Don't let people who do evil things around you, killing others senselessly, involved in all forms of banditry, just waylay people along the road, and born like 23, 25 people without any reason, running people over anyhow, getting into their fields and their farms and chasing them over and using their, your cattle to overrun the farms, raping the women, armed robbery, theft at all levels, to the extent that there's so much corruption everywhere. Don't let all those things bother you to the extent of not recognizing that gratitude is important and that you should always show gratitude to God that he has kept you even to be able to witness all those things. And you dare check very well that perhaps it's only with your eyes that you see the reward of the wicked. So 10,000 can fall on your left, 1,000 by your right. Still show gratitude that he has kept you and I pray for you, he will continue to keep you in the mighty name of Jesus. But for you to continually be kept, you have to show gratitude to the one that has been keeping you and that is even if you know the one that has been keeping you 
for some you don't even know the one that has been keeping you and that's the one i want to introduce to you right now or do i say present to you because i know there is hardly any case that you would not have had the name of jesus before so let me represent jesus to you the king of kings the lord of lords the one to whom gratitude should always be shown and is the savior of your life the savior of my soul and if you give your life to him things will always go better for you and you always have many more reasons to show gratitude to him if you are ready for that experience say this prayer after me say lord i come to you today i've just heard about gratitude i want to be able to show gratitude too therefore forgive me of my past that is so full of sin and give me the grace from today to begin to walk and walk with you that I will have many more reasons to give, give gratitude unto you. I pray in Jesus name. And welcome into the kingdom if you said that prayer. And for the rest of us, let us say, Father, today we give you all appreciation and praise for all your goodness and your mercies. I pray that in all that I do today, you give me many more reasons because you will bless me the more to have a heart of gratitude towards you. Today and always, I pray in Jesus' name. Go out today. Remember that gratitude is essential. He who is able to think and recognize that God has done a lot in his life will be able to thank that God who has been so wonderful. God bless you. I judge you faithful. I call you faithful. I call you good, you are